Hi everyone, hope you're staying safe and well. Bernard here with on the Citizen Channel and a, a look back. Big match review today of the Southampton game. I'm recording this about an hour after after the game finishes. I got this thing about literally literally the ref blew his whistle and the postman came. So I mean that's how late the postman's coming. So I got me my program. So there will be a little review of that program in the in the coming period. So please look out for that. And I think I've uh, done done one or another little game at uh, Old Trafford. I've done their program as well, so keep your eye out for that one as well. That'll be that'll be out very soon. Yeah, but today we're looking at obviously City away at Southampton at St Mary's, Saturday the nineteenth of December, three pm kickoff. A must win game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a must win game. Yeah, we'll have our usual features. Uh, a couple of obviously headlines, but obviously uh, recording this th this time of the day just after the match. Obviously, only two or three headlines I could pick up on, but uh, we'll have our highlights and lowlights of the game. Match stats, quirky stats, and some quirky stats there. Uh, Pep here to twenty twenty three, perhaps, possibly, maybe. Uh, watch and of course uh, Manchester Evening News and my player ratings with Mr Simon Bukowski in charge so we'll have that today and I'll, we'll go through that and uh, please welcome to the channel if you've not seen this before please if you'd like to sub that'd be fantastic push that whole subscribe button push the bell notification if you're interested in letting knowing when these these vlogs and videos are coming out I do city past, city history, city present, city quizzes lots of lots of stuff on there and you'll also notice on the playlist I do I do if you have any interest in TV and uh, films uh, I do little reviews on that as well plus posters and quizzes on movies etc. So if that's very interesting to you or anyone else you can give a nudge to please that'll be absolutely fantastic get them uh, get them subbed as well it'll be much much appreciated. And please check my links. I'll put my links up on screen now and uh, uh, for Facebook and Twitter. And if you if you want followers or friends on there, I do check every couple of days and follow and friend everyone back. So that'll be great if you can do that for me. Right, let's get to the game. Let's get to the game today. Yeah, four changes to the West Bromwich Albion game in the lineup, wasn't it? Uh, Edison, Walker, Diaz, Stones, Cancelo, Rodrigo, Gundogan, KDB as captain, Bernardo. Torres and Sterling, yeah, Subs, Carson, Aki, Aguero, Zinchenko, Mendy, Fernandino, Mares, Foden, and Nemecha. I don't know, I don't I don't understand why I've had that many subs on the bench. He doesn't he doesn't want to play him, does he, these days? Yeah, my lineup thoughts. I did alright there, didn't I? I got um, quite impressed with that. I got nine correct. Um obviously it was nice to see uh, Bernardo and uh, I knew Rodri and Gundogan had start because that's his, that's his go-to thing, isn't it? I mean, uh, as I say, as far as defensive capability, even though I don't rate either of those two defensively, when we, when we when I think we have to have a little bit of grit in there, he tends to play those two anyway. But uh, anyway, that's that's just how it is, isn't it? So yeah, I was uh, I got nine correct. Obviously, I had Aguero in there, didn't I? But obviously, I wasn't uh, too sure of his fitness, so a little bit of a bit of a question mark. And I thought he'd play Mares because he's obviously one of his guys, isn't he? But uh, he didn't, did he? Yeah, pre-match on social media. Yeah, most most people thought it was a decent team. There's a comment about um, great to see Bernardo in the team, which which it was because, as I said in my preview, he did played quite well the last couple of games for City. It was a bit, I think, a bit a bit unfair him not getting a run out against United. Uh, and people asking what has happened to Laporte. Say well, obviously Laporte's not our number, you know, not our go-to guy anymore at the back, is it? Diaz and Stones are our main two guys, so I wasn't I certainly wasn't surprised that Laporte wasn't playing, to be honest with you. Uh, and people asking why were Rodri and Gundogan playing together again? I sort of covered that, didn't I? Even, even though I think they're pretty useless defensively, I think when we have to be more defensive, I think he plays those those two uh, all the time in this double pivot, doesn't he? But uh, yeah, uh, a lot a lot of qualms about that. Uh, someone commented, why do City fans get deja vu every time the team is selected for match day? Yeah, someone else commented, Rodri starts again with a question mark. But hey, there you go. Yeah, I mean, uh, personally, yeah, I didn't have much problem with that team. I, I did actually tune into Amazon a little bit before. I had a bit of buffering problems today with Amazon. So I ended up watching it on a stream and I had Amazon on as well. And uh, obviously between the two, I managed to sort of watch the match in, in full. You know, one one was a couple of minutes behind the other. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I did have problems with Amazon today, unfortunately, which I think a lot of people, when I looked at the last game that was on Amazon, the West Brom game, uh, had a similar thing. So, But listening to the Amazon pundits, I thought, I thought we were playing in the uh, World Cup uh, holders, uh, quadruple holders. I mean, we weren't half bigging up Southampton. Yeah, all credit to him. You say we they did play a good game. We'll get into that, obviously. But uh, you know, I thought I thought we're not going to win this. I thought obviously they're that they're that good Southampton. We don't have a chance. 
Yeah, the officials today, of course, uh, Mike Dean was referee. His assistants was Ian Hoosin and Darren Can, And the fourth official, Robert Jones, with VAR, Mr Lee Mason. Fortunately, we didn't have to use him. That's a fortunate thing, isn't it? I mean, almost, but not quite. Assistant VAR was Adrian Holmes. Yeah, match highlights and lowlights. Yeah, very quickly go through these. I mean, Southampton started very lively with confidence. Uh, there was a good block by Walker early on. And then City sort of came more into it. Bernardo was was very, very good. I thought that first 10, 15, 20 minutes, uh, he was all over with purpose, though. I mean, he, he tended to be all over later in the game without much purpose. But uh, obviously, initially, he, was fan he, he worked hard. And I think the other the other players um, sort of sort of fed off that, uh, that uh, what's you call it, that, that urgency, that, that keenness. Uh, Sterling. <sighs> Sterling was well over with a chance, wasn't he? And uh, obviously... There was an easy save for McCarthy from Cancelo as well in those early early knockings, but no, nothing fantastic. Nothing. Obviously, we were thinking oh, it's going to be one of those days, but obviously the main highlight of that first half was obviously on 16 minutes where some com combination wasn't it? KDB to Bernardo, back to KDB who found Sterling three in the middle. I did notice there was five City shirts in that box. This is what we want to see. We want to see options when we get in that box for players to do something, and I did notice there was five uh, five five of these shirts in the box when that uh, chance fell to KDB to cross it in and obviously Sterling did very well. Nice, simple, didn't think too much about it, just a nice side foot into the goal so that was pretty good. Uh, a bit of a low light, I mean KDB got booked literally for controlling, uh, turning, controlling the ball and accidentally obviously kicking the guy because he didn't know he was there so that was a bit uh, Mr Dean obviously doing his usual when he likes, he likes to Flourish his yellow card, doesn't he? But uh, that was a bit of a low. I mean, you know, he didn't do anything wrong, KDB. He didn't foul the guy. And I think a couple of Southampton players were uh, sort of whinging about it as well. But uh, pretty pathetic, really. Yeah, but Southampton remained positive and... Uh, Possibly in that half. I don't think City were much of a threat after that, to be honest, after the goal. And uh, Southampton did have a two or three good half chances. And a couple of headers that they should have done better with. There's one, obviously, with its uh, yeah, dubious chance for a penalty. I mean, Dean had given it. Obviously, VAR wouldn't have overruled it. But obviously, it's not a clear and obvious error. So, obviously, VAR didn't didn't say, yes, it should be a penalty. But that was a... Yeah, it was it was an interesting one that wasn't it? Because anywhere else on the pitch, it probably would have been a free kick. But all credit to Dean, he didn't jump to give the penalty. So that that was a a lucky escape, wasn't it? And he had another header, free header uh, from a from a corner that he added over the bar when he had really could have done a lot better. One of their strikers. So, uh, yeah, they were causing prob causing all hell down that right wing as well. When the Cancelo was having a nightmare, I thought, Pep, do something. Get him bolstered up. Get someone else over there. Because uh, Kyle Walker-Peters and Walcott were absolutely tearing him apart. He, he didn't, you know, he's not the great. We know he's not the greatest defender. And yeah, he, you know, Pep just seemed happy to let it happen. Um, again, I, I just don't understand. Um, obviously, they weren't as much of a threat the second half. But I don't think that's because tactically City did anything different. I just think Southampton were out of a bit of idea and uh, got a bit tired but uh, yeah I mean Walcott and, and, and Peters Walker Peters down that right were, were causing I thought there was going to be a goal every time they got the ball over there they really, really were causing lots of problems and uh, I think Southampton may think themselves a little bit lucky to go in 1-0 down at half time to be honest with you I thought they played quite well because they lost Danny Ings as well who's obviously the next he's the next uh, Maradona uh, Messi isn't he again according to, according to the commentators you know it's Danny Ings so we were lucky. We were lucky that he got, unfortunately, a little twinge and was injured. Had to go off. Yeah, so nil uh, one nil for City at half time or nil one if you're looking at who's at home and who's away. Uh, second half, yeah, again Southampton had a lot of the ball, but again some half chances. Not the greatest finishing uh, by Southampton. Uh, Bernardo sort of sort. Of Jot, uh, blotted his copybook, didn't he, a little bit in the second half. And he, he had two good chances sort of spread in that second half where, where he just made the wrong decision, where he should have hit, hit the ball first time. And the first one, he just sort of divvered and divvered and it ended up not doing anything with it. And the second one, he ended up crossing it back for Mares late in the game when he perhaps should have just dinked it himself. Uh, yeah, he did. Uh, I'm not going to go have a two down on him because I thought he had quite a good game. But again, his uh, his actual confidence in front of goal is is like the rest of the most of the rest of the team. To be honest with, you, it's pretty shot at the moment. I mean, KDB again had a, a terrible, horrible shot that literally the goalkeeper just sort of literally just casually little dropped on and saved it because it was such a feeble effort by KDB. It, it was really awful. He should he should have at least made the goalie have to pull pull a decent save off. 
Uh, 72 minutes, of course. Mares was on. Torres, sorry, Mares was on. Yeah, Torres was off there. And all Mares sort of did for the rest of the game was either lose the ball or or actually blast it over again. I don't think he had a, a great uh, time coming on as a substitute. Uh, Foden was stripped and uh, was stood there in his kit, but never came on. And that was the same time that uh, Mares came on. So we don't not sure what happened there, but obviously Pep playing his old substitute games again. And then you think about the uh, Stones and. Um, quite soon 73 minutes you had the Stones and Edison where Stones sort of put his foot out and Ed did, did he get a shout from Edison we don't know we'll never know will we so they weren't quite on the same wavelength but we got away with it the ball bounced high and the Southampton striker couldn't get any power on his header and it just looped onto the top of the net but uh, yeah Mr Edison and Stones I mean apart from that I mean they had a fantastic I think they had a brilliant well not a fantastic game but they had a really solid game those two apart from that but uh, they played really well so I'll, for I'll forgive them that little little error uh, 78 minutes, um, Gundogan brought a good save out from McCarthy, although again, yeah, it wasn't it with the fantastic power, it was just well placed, so it gave McCarthy the option of actually getting across and saving it. Yeah, 82 minutes, Walker went down and we had another bit of a substitute thing, didn't we? Aki had stripped off, ready to come on and obviously he didn't come on either, so obviously that was a bit of fun, obviously Walker carried on playing. Uh, last 10 minutes. Chance to kill the game, wasn't it? But uh, I think Mahrez was the main culprit. We had three or four half chances from breakaways where Southampton had pushed men forward. He was not no great uh, threat, to be honest with you. The, the sort of the last the sort of last knockings of that second half, they didn't look as though they'd worry us. So the five minutes injury time really didn't really do anything. I don't think they got the ball in our box, to be honest with you, something because they'd never really threatened for about the last twenty minutes of the game. So. In the end, a comfortable 1-0. It could have been so much different. As I say, we were a little bit lucky to go in at half-time 1-0 up, I think. Just have a quick look at the ref. Yeah, he's a frustrating referee, isn't he? He likes, he likes to... I think he's the he gives the most yellow cards, does he? I think of all the referees. He likes to brandish his yellow cards, doesn't he? And that thing on KDB. I'm not going to... I'm going to stock him half a point for that. Anyway, so you start from six. I mean, I'm going to give him a 5.5 out of 10 because at the end of the day, say he could have easily given a penalty to Southampton, which he didn't, so all credit to him. But I'm going to dock him for his... his you know, the inability, he frustrates you because he seems to pick up really small things that are not, and there's nothing wrong and, and misses some big things. You know, for both teams, not just for City or Southampton, you know, for City, but for Southampton as well. So I'm only going to give him a 5.5. He's just, he's just a frustrating referee to watch, to be honest with you. Yeah, a little match sum up. Yeah, good game for the neutral, I think. Certainly the first half. I think the second half was, was a bit poorer. Uh, the conditions were a bit bit damp and wet, weren't they? I mean, on the balance of play, yeah, we'll look at the stats in a minute, but uh, we probably were a little bit fortunate. I mean, one of the headlines that I'm going to read later is obviously we, we, were, we were really lucky, obviously based on what I've read before, but there you go. I think that's a bit unfair. I think we did we did a job and we did it. Um, there was no is, is that a word? I was thinking we worked hard, but there was a lack of clinicality in in the box. So that's, that's a new word I've created: clinicality by City. When we could have done better, but that sort of also went for Southampton as well. And uh, Bernard, of course, so not perfect, needs to learn how to shoot. And obviously, as I said, I think it's just a confidence level with all the guys. I mean the. Uh, Obviously, work rate was fantastic, but there's at least a couple of chances, a couple of half chances where he should have either shot or passed, passed it or whatever. But he just he just let us down. Solid defensively again. I mean, nothing, no problem with that. But there was sort of three or four Southampton efforts could have been better, where our defence wouldn't have been able to deal with it. But uh, it was a it was a tough game at the back, physical, physical. Because uh, yeah, they do have some quick players and some interesting young players Southampton, but they do have that physicality as well. I mean, the opposition, yeah, just. Just summing up the opposition, there's a good mix of pace and physicality. They work hard, especially especially works hard in this game, but I think it did tell, didn't it? I think they're not going to work that hard for every team they play, and I think the last 15, 20 minutes they had little to offer because I think they were pretty knackered, even though obviously he went quite forward thinking with his substitute, but I think that sort of broke the flow of the game as well, and obviously they didn't really offer anything, uh, certainly that last, certainly from the 75th, 80th minutes, uh, I think there were very few and far between chances for Southampton. Uh, yeah, they are all right, I think the first, after that, I think we've moved up to six now, obviously there's other games to be played, etc., and I think Southampton, uh, yeah, third or fourth, I think they might be fourth, but... Uh, 
Yes, top half, top half is definitely possible. I, I'm not going to big them up like the commentators were. I think they'll do all right. I think they'll do all right. And top six might be a struggle. You might they might edge it, but I think as the season progresses, I think I think teams like Southampton will drop off a little bit. Uh, the match stats, yeah, shots nine by Southampton, eleven by City on target, three by Southampton, five by City. Possession forty eight percent, fifty two percent, so quite quite low. Even though City had just slightly more of the ball, passes four hundred ninety nine by Southampton, five hundred forty four by City. Pass completion was low, wasn't it? Eighty two percent by Southampton, but only eighty five percent by City, which is quite quite uh, quite low for them. Uh, fouls nine by Southampton, eleven by. City, that sounds about right. Corners, uh, I think it was 6-6, uh, six, six, a draw on corners, 6 for them, 6 for us, and uh, they're quite interesting corners, weren't they? They just, they just put 3 or 4 big lads around Edison, I think the team, we should do that, but we haven't got big lads to put around opposition keepers, do we? But I think that, that's a good way of doing it, I thought Edison coped quite well though. Right, on to the player ratings, Mr Bukowski's in charge now, I think that's... Uh, I think uh, that Stuart Brennan's retired, auntie, from this now. I think he's always going to be Mr. Bukowski, Simon Bukowski. Did I say Stuart Bukowski? Simon Bukowski, anyway. 6.5 is my basis today for uh, for the City players. So if this turn up and have a good, solid, standard game, it's a 6.5. Any worse, they get less. Any better, they get more. Right, Edison. Uh, Simon, I'll give you the Simon's things first and then my little... Thoughts after. Under regular pressure from the off, he was excellent with hands and feet. Probably his most hard-earned clean sheet of the season. He's given an eight. That's very kind. I'm not going to go that high today because we did work hard, but I'm going to give a nice solid 7.5. So I'll give him an extra point, Edison. So I thought it was great under pressure, but he did have that one little thing with Mr Stones, didn't he? Walker enjoyed the opportunity to have forward down the right flank interchange with Bernard. I want to show the cooler head than he had last week in the derby. So he's given him a seven. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with seven. I think he deserves half a point more than the basic. I think uh, he works hard. Stones um, got gets better by the game. A commanding and confident performance that directs any danger away from his own box. I'd have to agree. I mean, he's given him an eight. I'd give him, again, 7.5, similar to Edison. Communication with Edison, again, was a little bit... It's that, that one thing, but I'd give him a good solid 7.5. He might have been pushing the eight, but I'll give him a 7.5. Diaz, this looks an excellent partnership with Stones, remaining unflustered and calmly moving the ball forward. So he's given me an eight, yeah. I mean, it was a, sort of calmly moving the ball forward sometimes was a hoof, but you know, there you go. Yeah, I'd give him 7.5, Diaz. As I said, I'm going to give him the same as Stones and Edison, to be honest with you. Cancelo, his side was tight, his Southampton's really got him behind him. Yes, his recovery work was good enough to avoid any disasters. Yeah, he's giving him a seven, Cancelo. I've. I give him six point five. I didn't. He didn't have much going forward. I think he was constantly exposed. And all right, he didn't get any help, but he, he just, he just looked as he is not great at defending. So I'll give him. I give him the standard because obviously I thought you know he, he was a bit left out to dry. Wasn't he by 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 Pep and over on that side with those two nippy players at him. Uh, obviously, but uh, yeah, I'll give him a standard. I'll let him off. I'm not going to take any points off him. I'll give him six point five. Rodri overcame a difficult start to impose himself on the game. City have a better pace and rhythm to their team when Rodri plays with an element of risk. Yeah, he's given him a seven. Again, I'm not going to mark him down, but I didn't notice him apart from a couple of lumbering jogs back. I just, and again, that could be a good thing when you don't notice him, but I did, did sort of him and Gundo, and I sort of tried to watch a bit more today. <laughs> I didn't really notice Rodri that much. So I'm going, I'm giving this, I'm giving the basic 6.5. I've not locked him anything down, but, and then we go on to Gundo. And of course, uh, very busy getting forward, regularly alongside De Bruyne to support the attack. His execution, the final pass wasn't quite there, and that's understated, it, I think. But the positions he worked were encouraging, and he's given him a seven. Yeah, again, I've given Gundo a six point five. Yeah, he did get in some good positions, but certainly in that first half, he, he gave the ball away at least three or four occasions. Uh, in midfield, and they could have easily broke or whatever. I, I, again, as I said, I did watch Rodri and Gundogan today because I'm quite interested in this double pivot and what it brings to us on a, as a defensive thing. <laughs> because neither of those are rate defensively, so yeah, I'm giving, I'm going to give him the basic. But I wasn't overly impressed again with Gundogan. KDB, not everything came off, but it remains a heartbeat of the team. An excellent running cross for Sterling's goal. He's full of running in the second half. He's given a seven, Simon. Yeah, I'm giving him six point five. So. Standard because yeah he had he had the assist but apart from that, that he had that terrible finish and I just don't think he was particularly firing again to be honest with you so I give him this 
good standard solid game of 6.5. Bernardo making the first start in the league since Tottenham game. Bernardo was full of energy to trouble Southampton defence and rarely wasted possession. Played in at least three positions. Excellent in the moment, didn't he? he? Very rarely gave the ball away. Mr. Bubblegum was okay. He worked hard. He's giving him eight, Simon. Yeah, I give him 7.5. I'm not going to give him any player more than 7.5 today he did have a great start but and it petered off a little but he never gave up he never gave up running and as i said his finishing needs to improve he needs to because i'm sure he could finish better and, and just just put your foot through it with your right foot as well don't be trying to shoot with your right foot just have a go practice you know you get you do have training sessions practice a bit more Torres was Jesus absent. Torres started up front, but was unable to find much space in behind. Did help to keep the attack fluid as he switched switch with Bernardo. Yeah, he's give Torres a six. Yeah, I mean he's perhaps my only player today. Uh, is he my only player today? I've just said that. Yeah, he's my only player to get less than the basic. I thought he was very very poor and unutilized and used to be honest. So I give him a six as well, which is half a point down. But and he's he's if you like my worst player of, the, of today unfortunately, but uh, there you go. I mean, we've seen that. He's not a young player. He's going to be in and out, isn't he? Sterling showed good awareness to peel off his defenders. De Bruyne sent the ball into the box and good technique to finish first time. A goal that would have been a given before the season, yet much needed. Yeah, he took the goal well. No, all credit to him. He's given him a seven. Yeah, I would usually give half a point to a point for an extra goal, but because of the rest of the game, I didn't think he contributed that much and some of his decision-making wasn't perfect again at a crucial time, so... I'm just going to give him the solid 6.5 because he did score the goal, so I'm not going to mark, certainly not going to mark him down, but I'm not going to give him anything fantastic either. And substitutes, well, we had one, didn't we? Mares for Torres on 71 minutes. Offered some, offered something different to Torres. Yeah, well, he probably did, but, uh, you know, again, well, yeah, this this guy gets my lot. You know, I, I don't usually mark him unless he's been on 20 minutes, but there was five minutes injury time, so, yeah, he was on for... Uh, 90, 24 minutes, wasn't it? Yeah, so Simon's give him six. I'll give him a six. I'll give him half a point less because, as I said, he was too greedy. He ran into dead ends. He lost the ball and he must have blasted over at least two occasions. Could have been three. Very poor when he came on. He did, he did offer something to different to Torres. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> but I don't know what. Yeah, so there you go. Right, just one substitute again. Hey, it's good job. Good job, uh, you know. Why don't these clubs vote for five substitutes? We obviously something wrong there, isn't it? I mean, obviously we always make use of all our substitutes, don't we? At City, we have them stripped off, ready to come on, and they still don't come on. Yeah, City's a man in a match out. Yeah, I'm gonna. It was a close thing. I was thinking of Bernardo, but I mean, I think he got the last one or the one before, so I'm gonna give it Mr. Stones. I think I'll give him a man in a match before as well because you've got to give someone a defence today. I think certainly the first half they worked really hard, and the second half they were more comfortable. But uh, yeah, I think. I'll forgive him that communication error, error with Edison because even Edison may have got man of the match because he wasn't anything spectacular but he was confident in what he did so but yeah I'm going to give it John Stones today my citizen man of the match Pep well let's have a look at Pep Pep watch till 2023 I mean after that West Brom game you, you would have thought he might he might jump you know before he's pushed but uh, well he's never going to get pushed is he let's be honest about it so Pep watch till summer 2023 possibly at least yeah, uh, interesting team, a uh, good team. He's not, you know, if I'm getting eight and nine players right, he's not, uh, he's not quirky, Pep, is he? He's sort of sticking to his tried and trusted. Um, but again, the substitutes is a problem, but I'm going to have a little bit of defence with him on that because obviously I'm not sure what happened with Foden. Um, and again, just, just one made. But uh, it was interesting because... Uh, a sort of pragmatic pep. I half expected another defender to come on for that last 15, 20 minutes. But obviously, he saw that Southampton weren't actually doing that much, I don't think. And he recognised he recognised that. So he, he sort of recognised that Southampton shot the bolt a little bit. So I think by putting an extra defender on would have sort of ruined any flow City had and brought more pressure on us. So I think he did that all right, actually. So even though he only made one substitute, I think it's probably probably right under the circumstances. So all credit to him. And he was very, very animated, which is always good. I mean, I like to see an animated Pep as well, you know, you know, like his quirky Pep. I like to see an animated Pep. So, and he seemed quite keen and he didn't have any whinges about the five minutes injury time, even though it was probably more than perhaps it should have been, um, which is unusual. You know, there's a bit of time wasted, but hey, uh, it's quite funny actually the Southampton fans booing the City fans. I remember last year when they beat us one uh, last season, 1-0 in July. 
I remember the, the amount of time they wasted was unbelievable. There you go. That's, that's football, isn't it? It's only to be expected. So there you go. Quirky, quirky stats, uh, I think, to finish us off today before a couple of headlines. Uh, Manchester, up to Joe, Manchester City have won their last 11 away Premier League matches, kicking off at 3pm on a Saturday, and they haven't lost an away Saturday 3pm since September 2013. So I think that's now 12 we've won, because I think that was before the game kicked off, when they were beaten by 3-2 by Aston Villa back in tw September 2013. So that's one of those stats he's, that I like to see after the match, not before the match. That's when they put it out, though, before the match. Kevin De Bruyne has registered 15 Premier League assists in 2020, three more than anyone else. Well, and he's not playing that well, is he really? Well, only in 2017 has he assisted more Premier League goals in a calendar year, 18. Uh, following their 1-0 victory today, no side has conceded fewer goals, 12, or kept more clean sheets, 6, than Manchester City in the Premier League this season. Yay! You have conceded just 6 goals in 11 league games since losing 5-2 to Leicester. Absolutely fantastic. And at Stat City, Raheem Sterling has scored 18 goals in 2020 for City, more than any other player this calendar year. Well done, Raheem. Man City have now kept 4 consecutive away clean sheets for the first time since November 2018. Long mate continue yeah just a couple of headlines on city's own website uh sterling strikes to sink southampton uh the guardian this is an interesting one manchester city snaffled a slightly fortunate victory at southampton well you know if it's based on chances and possession uh the city i'm afraid guardian were the better team but i i understand the statement as i said i think we were a little bit lucky to be going in up one nil at half time, but it's uh, they're quick to jump, aren't they? Even even when there's a positive, these these papers are quick to jump on City, aren't they? I don't think any other teams treat the same, but there you go. The Daily Mail, a bit more positive. Manchester City edged to a crucial victory against high flying Southampton to close the gap on the top four. And the, I think the last headline today, the BBC, here we go. Manchester City returned to winning ways in the Premier League and closed the gap to the top four with a hard-fought victory, yeah, I think they can call it that, over informed Southampton at St Mary's. So there you go, in conclusion, yeah, as I said, and I said in the preview, this has become a must-win game, and it certainly was, and we did. Um, <laughs> so, all right, not the easiest of passages to a win. Uh, not pretty. Uh, too many poor decisions, again, in the final third. The finishing was pretty poor again apart from one great finish from nice cool finish from Sterling um, we did ride our luck as the Saints also thought sort of finished poorly on three or four occasions at least I can remember where there were certainly good half chances so there you go but as I said must win game we won it uh, obviously, I'm, I've, obviously, I have no real interest in Liverpool, but obviously they are our main competitors. But there's a few others this season, isn't it? But a seven-nil win at Palace wasn't bad, was it? But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think we would have frightened them with that one-nil win at Southampton. But I think it was a flipping good win, so I'll, I'll take that. I will take, we'll take that job done. Another, another job done. Um, yeah, all round. So, did I give Pep a score? No, I won't give him a score. I mean, if, if it's 6.5, I'm going to give him the standard 6.5 Pep. Yeah, I forgot all about Pep since so I didn't, didn't score him, but uh, I can't I can't take anything off him, can I? Anyway, thanks for joining me. Of course, I'll be back with a preview of the Arsenal Carabao Cup, our cup. You know the Carabao Cup, that's our cup, the Carabao Cup. Uh, yep, yeah, the quarter final at the Emirates on Tuesday, the 22nd of December, 8 pm. So I will be back on Monday with a preview of that one. And please check out my recent Citizen Channel City Pass vlogs on Mr. Joe Royal, a two part. Is that, he was that good, he was with us that, that long. An interesting bit on uh, Joe Royal as a City player, not as a manager. I have done a manager of Joe Royal, so I've checked that out as well. That's on the, should be on the playlist. Uh, but this is about Joe Royal as a player, so there's a two part one of that. So if you get a chance to watch that, especially with Christmas coming up there, uh, please do so. Uh, Please have a watch of that. And I've just done my That Was The Week That Was, which obviously featured the United and West Brom game. So 20 questions, spot the ball, uh, who's the player, the missing headline round, etc, etc. Have a little bit of fun with that as well over Christmas. And uh, obviously after the Arsenal game, there will be another one just, just before Christmas. Hopefully I can get that out just before uh, Christmas Eve for you to have a go at over the Christmas Christmas holiday. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this big match review.
Whatever you do the rest of the day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More importantly, let's all look after each other, right? Come on, you blues. And if we meet again here on the Citizen channel or you flip over to my film and TV channel, have a, have a look at what I've got to say on there, please. Stay safe, blues. Bird is saying goodbye for now.